Caddis Maximus here, this time just a, as a quick review of the Harbor Freight 2 and 3 quarter inch uh, billet steel puck lock. This thing runs about $12 at Harbor Freight and is one of their or heaviest duty locks. Now puck locks are popular because they just have a huge chunk of steel and they offer inherent drill protection. The Harbor Freights are softer steel than a $50 or even a $100 version of one of these. Uh, but it's just so much metal that you have to drill through. It makes them extremely, extremely drill resistant. And obviously being a solid piece of steel, they are resistant to all forms of physical attack, grinding attacks. Uh, you can get through anything with power tools, but a block, the idea behind a lock like this is that it uh, is supposed to force somebody to go through a great deal of physical effort with tools uh, to get past it. And most times people don't get past these locks. They're designed to go around the shackle or a hasp and they just lock on. And since it's usually flat against the surface, these would be used on trailers. You wouldn't use these on a chain for a bicycle, but they're used to lock up trailers and facilities and things like that. And so the idea is that somebody is going to grind or uh, pry it off that they'll just destroy, you know, whatever it's connected to versus the lock itself. And Harbor Freight did an okay job on this, especially for $12, but there's really uh, two major issues. One can be resolved, the other one is difficult to deal with. And it has to do, the Achilles heel on this one has to do with how this lock bolt is attached to the lock core. And the lock core, the what prevents somebody from you know putting in a screw and yanking this out is actually just a thin little roll pin, and it's really disappointing. Many expensive ones like $1,500 ones the lock core itself has things like sidebars that lock into the steel body and then the bolt is just cursor cursorarily attached to the core so it can pull out but on this harbor freight everything that holds this core into the body is literally a little roll pin so they don't use any security pins in these or steel pins for drill protection, but you can always cut apart a couple pieces of a appropriately sized drill bit and put them in there for drill protection. And since these use standard small diameter pins, you can get pins, security pins, uh, for an American lock and actually upgrade this. You don't need to have a locksmith do anything funky with the key because you're not actually going to touch any of those pins. You're just going to get what's known as driver or top pins, spools and serrated pins, that kind of stuff. And any decent lock shop, you can just go in and ask, you know, for six uh, American security top pins and and most would be just happy to either just, you know, sell you them for 25 cents a piece or even give them to you. If you could go into a locksmith and they or, you know, safe shop and they act like a secret society or demand that they do the work themselves and charge you an outrageous amount of money. It, that's just not a business that's uh, interested in staying in business. Just walk out and go to the, the next locksmith down the street and they'd be happy to sell you some uh, some American security pins for super cheap because they're actually interested that you're interested in, in improving security. Anyway, as far as getting it all right, the way these work, um, besides having a, a nice six pin core, which is actually a really good start, they are a, a knockoff of an American puck cell lock, even down to the trapezoidal key, although the keyway isn't the same. The keys won't fit into each other's locks. And it's not reversed. This keyway is actually just much less aggressive than what the American is. But how these work is you put in the key and you just rotate it and the bolt is attached to the core. And on the end of the bolt here, there's a undercut and then two flats. What they've done in this lock body is they put in two extra hard steel pins. So when you push this in, it goes in between the pins and then twists and those two little wings lock in between those metal pins like so. And so that gives it lots of drill protection from the top because you have to drill through a ton of steel and then extra hard steel pins. And the bolt itself is actually pretty well secured in there. You're not going to, it's going to take a huge amount of force to try to rip that bolt out. But I'll show you what the real issue with this lock is. Let me get this screw out of here. I already loosened it up. Just one little screw is what holds it in place. We'll unlock it and just pull it out. And that screw just goes into this little track here, and that's what, you know, holds it in place. Now, the issue with these locks is that this is all held together with a small roll pin. I actually cut off a piece of an Allen wrench, and that's why it's solid. But uh, from the factory, this little pin is just a hollow little roll pin. And it just, uh, the reason that's uh, really kind of freaked me out a little bit is because this is a puck lock. Or not a puck, you know, it's not a disc lock, it's a puck lock. 
So this is going to be attached to something that's quite rigid. So somebody, it's not going to be flopping around like it's on a chain or something. So it means somebody can take, uh, many people watch my channel are familiar with Tapcon screws. They make screws that are designed, blue screws that are designed to screw into concrete. They're very uh, tough. And you could just screw one of those into the end of that and then just use a pry bar and just get, give it a couple wreaths and you'll be able to just rip this the little... You'll, what you'll do is you'll either shear the little uh, roll pin that's in there, uh, which is surprising, or uh, this lock core is really pretty large in diameter, so the wall of this metal dog, or this, uh, uh, I guess it would be the shackle, just a pin, uh, is really thin. You can see how thin it is there, and the cross section of this wall is like a 32nd of an inch, maybe a 16th of an inch. It's real thin, so I... Just saw somebody just with not much prying force screw a tapcon in there and just pry against the lock body in the tapcon. You know, they don't have to screw it all the way in with an impact driver. You can just use a pair of pliers to screw it into the brass. A tapcon will easily screw in the brass. And then just pry on it. You either shear that off or it'll break this these two tiny little webbings that are right there. And so I always thought that was kind of disappointing. You know, I thought they would have used the longer piece of brass so that they could have this more deeply inset and then they could use a larger diameter pin maybe even turn down the end of the core so it'd be more proportional and so that's the only thing i'm worried about maybe someday i'll be able to demonstrate that but you know i kind of like this lock just for a collection it's the only kind of lock that i have and it's great to talk about but i'm not going to destroy it for this video i did do it on those laminate padlocks because you get three to a pack so i still have a couple and I uh, really wanted to see what was going on inside and glad I did. The last thing I'll mention in this video for anybody who may uh, see it and say, oh, you know, I'm fine with this lock and how that works, but I would like to get some drill protection just so somebody can't just run up through uh, the core, you know, the brass core with a uh, just a drill and yeah, easily drill it out, is taking it apart, you know, or if you're going to put in American lock security pins, that would be even better because, you know, with six pins all american lock security pins uh and maybe the first top pin that you take like a drill bit and cut off you know the right diameter drill bit it's a pretty small drill bit maybe it's bigger than a 16 maybe 330 seconds or something uh that would give you drill protection just using a piece of a drill bit itself will be hard to drill through and so you could upgrade the security of this core pretty well and then the only thing you ever have to really worry about is somebody you know, doing some type of prying attack, and, and that would be acceptable. Most times when people see these kind of locks, uh, they don't even fiddle with them just because, you know, they're so imposing, and you basically think that you have to use a blowtorch or the world's largest pry bar to get them off. And that is, you know, true in most cases. It's just not entirely true with the Harbor Freight. Anyway, uh, getting to it, the way these things are locked up, it's a little bit funky. They've taken the internal core part right, th right through here, and uh, they've milled out the whole side. The whole right-hand side all along here has been milled out in a groove, but there's actually, uh, it's like a slot where it still has the back part there, and I think it was just to save brass so that they could recycle it and make it a little cheaper. Um, and on the left side, they have a bunch of slots the same way. And it can make, you can black hole yourself. The, the pins will fall into that slot and you can't get it back together or apart. And the lock cylinder is destroyed. So there is a trick to it. This back pin actually isn't what holds it in place when you open it up. There's This seventh pin is actually a spring-loaded lock pin. And in the core, there's like a half-moon slot uh, in the lock back of the lock core. This last pin on this Harbor Freight lock has a slot, and that's what provides the limiting so the key only moves 90 degrees. Well, it is spring-loaded, and it is actually steel, uh, but it's odd because it's in the very back of the lock, and usually you want your drill protection a little more forward. And so the trick of these locks is you have to, you know, you know obviously you use the key, but you just turn it. As soon as you get the key in there, what you have to do is put a slight... It's, it's really pretty darn tricky. Uh... You have to put a slight amount of pressure on the key, but you can't turn it too far. It only can turn like five degrees, and then just use a piece of wire or a tiny little Allen wrench, and you can reach up through there and push that one little pin 
once you have this off, you can get through the back and kind of push that pin up. And you just have to be careful, you know, it may be good just to hold this in a vise so you can be careful because you just want to have a little bit of pressure so when you push that pin up, it'll stay up. And you can only turn this about five degrees. The key will be just a little bit cantered and there's a, like one flat area right at about between five and ten degrees where you'll be able to slide it out properly and get a little follower in there. You could also push a piece of shim stock up through the back uh, even before you turn anything with the key and just press up on that pin till a piece of shim stock slides forward and then put in the key and turn it counterclockwise like five degrees and then pull out the core. So I did want to mention that for anybody who might be considering taking these apart is that is the trick uh, to getting these particular locks apart just because the way they mill out the lock core, the actual rotating part, uh, I don't even know why they do that but it can make it so you ruin the lock if you don't do it just just absolutely right. Otherwise, that was a review. And so for $12 and like another $3 at a locksmith and a piece of an Allen wrench just to make that pull-out protection a little bit better, uh, for $15, bucks you are going to get a pretty heavy-duty lock. It's going to be pretty much very difficult to get into or physically attacked in any fashion except for basically one kind of specific attack. There fortunately is no cast zinc or anything to worry about torching attacks or any of that kind of stuff. It really is pretty secure. And just the simple fact that there's a little knowledge of how the core works that you can take it apart and upgrade it with six high security pins from American locks. Um, you can have a lock that is a six pin that is quite difficult to pick especially for some criminal who's trying to do it upside down you know when it's locked to a trailer or something like that generally speaking i mean that's how i'd recommend this lock i'd say get it spend the three bucks spend a few minutes upgrading the core and it'll actually be quite the righteous lock probably one of the the most physical most physically and technically secure because of the availability of the six pin core and the last thing i wanted to mention is due to the, the nature of this uh, you can actually drill like an additional hole here, an additional hole here, and then use a kind of couple of tiny grub screws uh, because you can't drill crossways because you'll already have this one pin in there. But you can add additional grub screws and that will dramatically increase the pullout resistance of this. And so instead of just relying on two little pieces of webbing, you'll have the webbing and then you'll have like one or two or even three more grub screws and you can put a couple on the other side and then it will be really pull out resistant and so that's kind of what made me excited about it is it's a twelve dollar lock that maybe with an hour's worth of time and another couple three dollars of pins from a locksmith and it will be a really righteous lock and physically i don't you know it will be easily you're spending a bit of time and then it becomes a 40 or 50 dollar lock which is extremely hard for somebody to put a tap con in and rip out and extremely hard to pick so that's what i wanted to put out there with this lock and kind of the information is uh as far as anybody who's more of a do-it-yourselfer and into doing projects like this this harbor freight lock is a great candidate because quite frankly you can save a whole bunch of money get into it and then just spend a little bit of time and just a few extra dollars and uh, massively upgrade uh, the protection uh, that this thing will provide you. Anyway, uh, that's it for uh, this particular Harbor Freight review. And once again, I will mention, as far as generally speaking off the shelf, this lock is still probably the best one Harbor Freight has. It has cast zinc internals, but it has so much thickness. And the zinc is so thick in it that it would take many, many minutes and a huge cloud of smoke to actually melt it down. Otherwise, it has a difficult to pick uh, disdainer core, primarily because it's tension from the back. And it, require, it absolutely requires a special tool and somebody who really knows what they're doing to pick these locks. So most criminals will not get through these type of disc detainer cores. It has a solid steel body. The core is actually within the steel body itself. It isn't like a master lock where some of the lock core is exposed. And it has a huge 5 8 or a 14 millimeter shackle. So I always like to point that out. If you're going to buy any lock from Harbor Freight and just deal except for what it is, or accept it for what it is, get this thing. It's the same price as this puck lock, surprisingly enough. All right, next time I'll uh, talk about this American knockoff. Once again, thank you for watching, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. And to all my subscribers, I really do appreciate the support. Caddis Maximus out.